Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into an official simulation on the entire 2023 MLB season using the Out of the Park Baseball simulation game. Now guys, I've had to personally go through and try and put every big name player on the right team. I think I've gotten all the major players if there's an issue with the roster, it's probably just like, you know, guys not retiring because this version of this game does not have the absolute up-to-date rosters. It's based off the 2022 roster, so I've had to change everyone. And I kind of, I think I have every major player again on the right team, but this is officially March 30th, 2023. So we are on opening day right now. And I am not managing any team. I'm just going to simulate, recap at the end of each month. Now, just looking at these overall preseason predictions here, you know, a very close American League East with the Yankees winning it by five games, no team below 78 wins. Kind of interesting, the Blue Jays coming in last although I guess they would tie with the Red Sox, the AL Central. How about the Minnesota Twins winning 95 games? I certainly don't expect that to happen. And then Detroit ahead of the Guardians and the White Sox. Some bold predictions from the AI. You've got the Angels, Mike Trout, Shohei Otani, Finally getting the, to the playoffs. Seattle looks like a wild card team. Houston all the way down. They're in third place projected with the Rangers in fourth and the Athletics winning 72 games. They'll probably honestly win a lot less than that. Looking at the best hitters, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Aaron Judge, Mike Trout, Jordan Alvarez, Julio Rodriguez. You can see they've got Judge at 43 home runs. They've got Alvarez at 44. How about Ryan Mountcastle making the list there from Baltimore? And then the best pitchers, Randomly, George Kirby listed in front of Jacob deGrom, Garrett Cole, and Carlos Rodon, both on the Yankees. Shane Bieber, and you can see some guys rounding out. We'll see if Lucas Giolito has a bounce back year. And then for the NL, they do have the Atlanta Braves pretty comfortably winning. I just had to add Justin Verlander because it had Justin Verlander as retired. So I don't think it, you know, the AI has picked up yet that I've added the Mets and, and given them Justin Verlander. So the Mets just got an ace, which should bring this really very even. But right now, the Braves, 93 wins. The Mets at 85. Philadelphia right at 500. I actually have not edited in the Bryce Harper injury. So you know what? We're just going to say that Bryce Harper is... Uh, We'll say he's suspended for half the year or whatever. We'll say, because that he's supposed to come back during the All-Star break. We'll say like 88 games. We'll say he, he got popped or something for PEDs and he got suspended. But because in real life, he's coming back around the All-Star break. So I had to edit that in. The Chicago Cubs, that's just not realistic over St. Louis. I would be very surprised. But I did give the Cubs Cody Bellinger. So we will see. And then the Reds, not horrible. The Pirates not, I mean, what? How is Milwaukee going to finish at 70 and 92? I'm not sure. The Padres, so they have Soto, Tatis, but I don't think, yeah, I'm going to have to edit Tatis. So Tatis is suspended, I think, for 20 more games. I believe that's what his suspension is. So we're going to put him suspended. We're just going to say 20 games. And he'll be suspended for a little bit there. The Dodgers and the Giants both at 88 wins. And then the Diamondbacks and Rockies rounding out. Tatis is not going to play that many games, but possibly the best player. Okunia, Bryce Harper is also going to be out. There's Juan Soto on San Diego. Brian Reynolds still on the Pirates. Mookie Betts, Max Muncy, Suzuki, Josh Bell, I've actually got to, let me just edit this Josh Bell thing really quickly. So this is another one I forgot to edit. So they gave him a seven-year contract? Come on, folks. He got a two-year contract. Let's, let me just do this. You've got to go to that and that. So, so Josh Bell is now a guardian, of course. That was just edited. And then the best pitcher, they have Logan Webb. Wow, over over a few different guys there. You've got to wonder, where is Corbin Burns? 
That's the problem with out of the park baseball is the aging is so bad. I could actually edit the aging and make it slower. Honestly, that's what I'm probably going to have to do. If, if anyone, y y this is probably a must in terms of like, if you're going to play this game. So guys, when it comes to the settings, I would certainly move down the aging speed on the pitchers and the batters. And I would bump up the development speed, especially on the pitchers. It takes it takes way too long to develop a pitching prospect. Honestly, I might even bring this down more just because it's so bad. It is so horrible. We'll bring it down to 1.00. So that's kind of what I put it at. And I will go ahead and simulate the first month and then recap the standings. Oh, wow. Corbin Carroll, the young outfielder, got a player of the week. So that, that's good news for the Diamondbacks. But... We're going to go to the overall. It is May 1st, so we're going to go to the standings, kind of look at how things are going. The Blue Jays off to a great start at 19-10. and 10. They've built a nice lead. Yankees, maybe a little early panic going on in the Bronx, sitting three games under 500. you You've got Minnesota up in the Central. They're off to a decent start. Very jumbled Central. The Guardians off to a bad start. The White Sox only 10-18. and 18. The Astros, you know, we saw the preseason predictions. Looks like they're not going to pan out. They're doing very well in the West. They're three and a half games up on the Angels. Mariners right at 500. The Athletics hanging in there. Rangers really struggling. The Nationals, this is probably the shock right now. First place in the East. Uh, what? Over the Phillies, over the Braves. Although, all these teams, yeah, I would expect the Braves and Mets to really jump up here. They're basically all like three games back. The The Pirates are leading the Central, okay. But they are, I mean, they're tied with Cincinnati. They're, all these teams are jumbled up. My goodness. I mean, look how average this is. And then you do have the West with the Dodgers out to a nice start. San Francisco also, just a game back. And then, funny enough, the Diamondbacks sitting at 9-20. and 20. The wild cards, you've got the Angels, the Orioles, and the t lot of lot of teams jumbled up. Look at that, a game separation there. Pretty much all of these are kind of jumbled, so there's really no point in looking at those. Let's go to the statistics. Who's gotten off to a good start? Tristan Casis. Wow. 365. Riley Green sitting at 355. The young players, Will Smith, Gio Urshelo. Some interesting players here. Miguel Sano. Oh, he, he had to have started to take roids or something. There's just no way. Miguel Sano hitting 327, 1.8 war. Will Smith, Max Muncy. On base percentage, Miguel Sano. Looking at that. Uh, OPS, Will Smith, almost 1,300. Sano is in second. I would say Miguel Sano right now, you got to say, he's carrying the Nationals. He's got to be the leader for the NL MVP, although maybe it's Will Smith. Maybe it is, but those are just the stats. Mike Trout with the most walks. He's hitting only 257, but he's got a good on base. Andrew McCutcheon, I think that's sac yeah, Sacrifice Flies. He's got five of them, and I did forget to edit Andrew McCutcheon. He's actually on... Pittsburgh, excuse me, I missed that. Pitching leaders, Jose Urquidy for Houston with a 1.15 ERA. Lucas Giolito with a massive bounce back. D.L. Hall, the young pitcher for Baltimore. Sanchez Sixto makes his return, pitching well. And you guys can see also, how about this? Sandy Alcantar who won the Cy Young last year in six games. He's 0-6 with an 8-8-8 ERA. What? Uh, Zach Gallen is there, huh? And then just looking at this, so Giolito actually leads in war by 1.1. Giolito is running away with the Cy Young right now. Tyler Glass now, of course, leading in strikeouts per nine. Gilito's in second. Fran Valdez is third. Walker Bueller, Blake Snell, and Grayson Rodriguez, who's gotten off to an amazing start. 260 ERA. Well, in, in this simulation, it actually had him pitching last year. I believe he got injured. That's the only reason why he did not end up pitching. But, yeah, so that's basically the update on everything there. 
I will go ahead and simulate to the end of May and then update again. All right, it is June 1st. All right, it is June 1st in the MLB here as we hit the summer months. We've got the Blue Jays 10 games above 500, five games clear, the Yankees and the Orioles who are both 500, the Rays and Red Sox still within shouting distance. Minnesota leading the Central, very impressive record at 35-23. and 23. The Royals, very surprising, six games above 500. The Guardians playing better baseball, they're four up. You've got the Houston Astros tied right now with the Angels for first place with the Mariners, five games above 500. In the NL East, you've got the Braves back in first, not a great start for them, but they are four games above 500. Phillies, two games back. The Mets still within shouting distance. And the Nationals really struggling. They're 10 games under 500. The Marlins are possibly going to get the first pick. They're 15 games under 500. The Cubs continue their surprising start. 11 games above 500. The Pirates in second. The Brewers playing a little bit better with Cincinnati, and shockingly, I don't know why this game hates St. Louis, but they are in last place, 11 games out in the Central. The Giants really playing well, 36 wins for them, Dodgers just a half game back, the Padres 10 games above 500 with the Rockies and Diamondbacks rounding it out there. Let's update the statistics. We've got Andrew Benintendi leading the league in batting average. Two White Sox, first and second. And then we've got Colton Kowser, who is a rookie, hitting 330 for Baltimore. Javier Baez, how is that possible? How is it possible Javier Baez is hitting 327? Julio Rodriguez having a great season at 327. Gavin Sheets. So you've got three White Sox in the top six. Pretty crazy. You've got the league leader in home runs, Tristan Casas. Miguel Sano also tied. Nick Prato with 19. Aaron Judge, 17. Cody Bellinger, the resurgence. He actually is having a really good year with Chicago. And then Julio Rodriguez with 16 home runs. Nelson Cruz randomly signs with the Red Sox. I know it. I mean, I wasn't expecting freaking Nelson Cruz to have this much of a resurgence, but I forgot to put him on. San Diego. You've got Mike Trout leading the league and on base with Will Smith right behind him. You have OPS leader as Will Smith over a thousand. How about Brian Reynolds? I wonder if they'll trade Brian Reynolds. What a great year he's having right now. Christian Yelich finally having a bounce back year. Good for him. Julio Rodriguez right now leading the league in war by 0.8. Brian Reynolds in second, Will Smith. Looks like Julio Rodriguez is the clear front runner for MVP right now. And then in the NL, probably Will Smith, because he's a catcher, I would say, is leading there. Let's take a look at the pitcher pitching leaders and what is going on. Domingo Herman. Folks, come on. I mean, 3-1 and one with a 1.17. He's only started nine games. Steven Strasburg, the rebirth. Wait, this doesn't even make sense. Steven Strasburg is first in baseball in war, and he has a 5.65 ERA. Folks, folks, listen, listen, listen. What happened to the war stat? The war stat is broken. Luis Castillo... Oh, he signed with Toronto in this. Whoops. He's six and two. He's a, should I I think I probably should change that. It's too altering. I'm gonna have to change Luis Castillo. I'm gonna put him on Se- on uh, Seattle. Because it's too altering. Let's move him to Seattle. There, Luis Castillo is on Seattle now. But Sandy Alcantar, one and eight. He's pitching a little bit better, I guess, but holy crap. Charlie Morton at age 39 decided to torture himself and sign with Colorado and he's 2 and 8 with a 663 ERA. Why would you sign why you, you can't be pitching in Coors in Coors. You just can't. Not at that age. Not ever. Coors is terrible. Garrett Cole has at least he's got two complete games but he's struggling this year. Lucas Giolito. Boy has he really struggled. Didn't he have like a 
a war of 2.5. He's already down to 2.0 from the last month. So, well, I guess Steven Strasburg has a really good FIP. So he's probably gotten really unlucky with that ERA. But that is crazy. We are going to go ahead and simulate. Yeah, we'll simulate until the inter- international free agent signing. So simulate to July 1st. All right, it is July 1st. And if anyone is interested in the kind of the young players, we've got a nice little first baseman out of Venezuela with some major home run power. We'll see if he gets signed along with a pitcher from Venezuela as well. There seem to be some pretty de- pretty decent international free agents. But let's look at the updated standings. The Blue Jays still in first. The Red Sox four games behind the Yankees sitting four and a half back. And you do have both the Orioles and the Rays lagging. The Rays are just two and eight in their last ten. The Minnesota Twins still in first. They're 14 games above 500. The Royals and the Guardians within shouting distance both The White Sox and the Tigers look to be out of playoff contention. The Houston Astros tied once again with the Angels for first place. They are percentage points better, but technically they are tied. And then in the NL, you have the Mets charging into first by two and a half games over the Braves, the Phillies, and then the Nationals with the Miami Marlins, who are just terrible this year at 27 and 58. You have Cincinnati leading the Central, although it is a complete mosh pit. All of those teams separated by four and a half games or less. And then the West, you do have the Dodgers opening a nice lead. Looks like they're going to win 100 games yet again. They're 56-27. and The Padres, kind of surprising with all of their acquisitions and things like that. They are only 10 games above 500. Looking at the overall stats, You have Brian Reynolds leading baseball in batting average. Just probably, I mean, the best player in baseball this year by far. Pretty remarkable. Hitting 352. And and normally, Reynolds is thought of as as a pretty bad defensive center fielder. But he has a 6.1 war. You've got, who is this? Oh, is this a prospect for the Rockies? The, the thing with this game is Coors is just so crazy. Like, any player at Coors is going to get a major bump. This dude's hitting 345. Kowser's hitting 338. Benintendi, Gavin Sheets still on there. And then you do see, randomly, Harold Castro for the Detroit Tigers at 324. Good for him. The home run leader still is Tristan Casas at 30 home runs. Miguel Sano at 28. Casey Schmidt. Some no-name. I mean, what what is this story? I, I'm not even sure who this is. He's, he's going to be a five-star player. Okay. You've got Nick Prado. Torkelson, it, Torkelson is on the list. And Aaron Judge. Miguel Sano. Unfortunately, Miguel Sano only has two war. I would love to see him win the MVP. But it's just not going to happen. Brian Reynolds leading it on base. Nimmo, of course, he's always up there. There's Mike Trout, Will Smith as well. Tim LaCastro has a 400 on base, and he's in AAA. They sent him down. What are the Yankees doing in 56 games? He had a 400 on base with that speed, and you're going to send him down? Oh, my goodness. Brian Reynolds leading in slugging percentage. How is that possible? There's Otani. So yeah, Otani has only, oh, that's his pitching stats. He's pitched pretty well, 17 games, 8-3, and three, 96 strikeouts, 354 ERA. Brian Reynolds almost has an 1,100 OPS. Brian Reynolds, 6.1 war. There's Correa, Javier Baez having a resurgence. Julio Rodriguez, who's injured with a sprained thumb, he's out for a week. Will Smith and then Mookie Betts having a very solid Season. Let's take a look at the leader. Wait, where's the strikeouts? Joey Gallo. Let's see. Joey Gallo's hitting 129. How, why is he playing? Why would Joey Gallo play? You can't play him 79 games if he's going to hit 129. That is remarkable. Oh my goodness. He's leading by 40 strikeouts. But yeah, stolen base watch. Cedric Mullins and Mondesi in first and second there. And then the pitching leaders, Herman still is leading in ERA. 
but he does only have a 1.3 war. Castillo is in second. Tyler Glass now up there. Chris Bubik, Max Fried, and Sonny Gray. Alex Cobb makes a guest appearance, leading the league in wins at 10 and 5. I mean, he's walked a lot of guys. Sandy Alcantar, my goodness, 1 and 11 with a 5.95 ERA. What happened to him? Oh, and look at this, Jacob DeGrom. I mean, all these guys have high ERAs. Four ERA, he is leading in war. Steven Strasburg, at least his ERA is under five now. Corbin Burns, starting to pitch better. Brandon Woodruff leading in innings. DeGrom is there. Com uh, complete games, Garrett Cole has three. DeGrom has three. And Bar Barrios has one shutout. Tyler Glass now leading in strikeouts with Giolito in second there. Uh, but that's just that situation. I'm actually going to go to the draft now. So I don't know how this happened, but the draft lottery and somehow the White Sox, who were the 17th pick, they got the number one pick. Not sure how that happened. Let's look at this. I mean, what? How does this happen? How does this happen? Crazy. So we're going to actually just simulate the draft. So this is the draft results right here. The number one overall pick was a first baseman with a ton of power. Wow. Max Clark goes number two to the Pirates. Solid outfielder. Dylan Cruz goes number three, very developed outfielder. He goes to the Rays. The Rockies get a shortstop, Jacob Gonzalez, who's just a pretty solid overall player. Dylan Cup, the shortstop, who not a great hitter. He ends up going number five to the Orioles. And there is that. So now I'm going to simulate until August 1st. All right, it is August 1st as we reach the dog days of the summer. We do have the New York Yankees leading the AL East division for the first time this year. They are one game up on the Blue Jays, two games in the loss column. The Red Sox also within shouting distance in the Central. We have the Minnesota Twins with a commanding eight-game lead over the Guardians. They are 22 games above 500. We have the Angels taking hold of the West. They're two games ahead of the Astros, three games ahead of the Mariners. You've got the Astros leading for the wild card with Seattle, as well as Toronto there with Cleveland and the Red Sox rounding out the top wild card contenders. In the NL, you have Atlanta. They're one game in front of the Mets with the Phillies, 10 games under 500, the Nationals, and the Miami Marlins, who right now are the worst team in the league by far. The Central, the Cubs leading it with both the Pirates and the Reds just three games back. The Brewers and the Cardinals, surprisingly, in fourth and fifth place, six and a half games back and seven games back. In the West, you have the Dodgers, three and a half games up on the Padres. The Padres playing a lot better. They're eight and two in their last 10. They're 23 games above 500. The Giants sitting nine games up in the the Giants sitting at 59 and 50 and the Padres eight games up in the wild card the Giants one game ahead of the Mets they're taking a look at the overall stats we do have Harold Castro leading the league in batting average Brian Reynolds in second place Miguel Sanos tied with Spencer Torkelson, 35 home runs each. Aaron Judge at number three. Jose Ramirez leading in RBIs in front of Max Muncy. Mike Trout leading an on-base percentage ahead of Juan Soto. Really nice lead there for Trout. Brian Reynolds leading in slugging and OPS. He is the only player right now with an OPS above 1,000. He is also leading in war by a .8 in front of Javier Baez, is, who's having a great season, and Carlos Correa as well. And then just, I mean, is Joey Gallo still playing? You got to bench Joey Gallo. I think they might have benched him. He's at he's at 103 games, hitting 139. I did not want to do that. Uh, pitching stats, Domingo Herman, who got traded midseason to Houston, still leading in ERA at 245. Pitcher wins, Walker Bueller leading with Alex Cobb, Jacob DeGrom. Wow, a four-way tie there. 
Let's take a look at Sandy Alcantar. He's sitting at 2-14. and 14. Just a nightmare of a season. And no, I did not edit his stats or anything. I mean, this is legitimate. It's pretty crazy. DeGrom leading in war by a pretty hefty margin or over Castillo. You've got Eduardo Rodriguez pitching well. De, uh, looks like Giolito, who also got traded midseason to Houston. So it looks like the White Sox sold a lot of their players and they traded Giolito. I would be interested to see. I'm going to have to look at the... Oh yeah, the trade deadline just happened. So we'll look at the actual... All the trades and stuff like that. Fielding, independent, pitching, DeGrom leading with a 299. But yeah, so we will look at the transactions and see if any big trades happened. So this is the Luis Giolito trade. The White Sox are getting back a young pitcher who honestly doesn't look very good. Yeah, I don't know if I like that trade there for the White Sox. But I'm going to go ahead and simulate till September 1st. All right, the pennant chase is on. It is September 1st, 2023, and the New York Yankees have taken a commanding lead in the East. They're five games up on the Blue Jays. Everyone else in that division is out of it. You have Minnesota right now trying to lock down the Central. They're seven and a half games up on the Guardians. The West, very close battle between the Mariners and the Angels with the Mariners charging in front. They are 23 games above 500. The wild card situation, the Angels looking very good. They're five and a half games up. You have the Blue Jays three and a half games up and the Astros as the third wild card team with the Cleveland Guardians in deep pursuit there, just a half game back. In the NL East, you have the Mets three and a half games up on the Braves. Everyone else is out of it, including the Philadelphia Phillies who you know made the major signing of Trey Turner. Not working out for them this year. They made the World Series in 2022. The Cincinnati Reds, two games in front of Chicago. Will there be playoff baseball in Cincinnati? This is shocking. You've got the Brewers and you've got the Pirates, both four and a half games back. And the Cardinals, shockingly, 12 games under 500. They have no clue what happened to them this year. You've got the NL West, the Dodgers, Closing in on another 100-win season, but the Padres just three games back. The Giants sitting 15 and a half games back. And then the wild card, the Padres most certainly going to at least make the wild card. 14 games up, the Giants a game and a half. You have the Braves in the third spot with the Chicago Cubs in the hunt there. And then we will look at The updated statistics entering the final month. We still have Harold Castro leading for the batting title. Alec Thomas now in second with Brian Reynolds in third. Aaron Judge up to 42 home runs in front of Miguel Sano. He's batting 313 with a six war, so he's having a great season. You've got Jose Ramirez at 115 RBIs, Judge over 100, Tatis Jr. over 100, George Springer, Sano, and Muncie. Mike Trout still leading it on base percentage, Juan Soto at number three, Christian Yelich having a really good season, but he is out with an injury right now. Fernando Tatis, 41 home runs, taking the lead in slugging. Fernando Tatis also with the on base percentage. And how about Fernando Tatis, despite missing those 20 games suspended. He is leading in terms of war in front of Brian Reynolds. He is the favorite to win the MVP in the NL. Correa looks like the favorite in the AL with Mike Trout and and Aaron Judge, who might go back-to-back also there as well. And then you do have... uh, Aaron Judge leading in total bases. Cedric Mullins with 40 stolen bases. Aaron Judge leading Mookie Betts in total runs. Looking at the pitching leaders, you have Sonny Gray right now leading in ERA at 290. Very high, honestly, to be the league leader. Justin Verlander out of nowhere in second place at age 39, 291. Jacob deGrom, the wins leader right now with 15 wins, tied with Sonny Gray. The loss leader, Sandy Alcantar, he is 3-18 and with a 5.50 ERA. Looking at the total war, Jacob deGrom. So I would say Jacob deGrom is running away with the AL Cy Young. If he's got a war, 
you know, one and a half more than the next highest. And then the NL Cy Young might come down to Burns versus Urias. Brandon Woodruff leading in innings pitched. Garrett Cole has four complete games. Tyler Glass now leading with 240 strikeouts just over DeGrom. And that's pretty much going to do it for the update on that. So the next time I'm going to simulate till the end of the regular season, we're going to give the final breakdown. All right, the regular season is officially over. We've got the playoffs beginning. Let's go through the final regular season standings. The Yankees end up winning 98 games, finishing nine games in front of the Blue Jays, but the Blue Jays are a wild card team. You have Minnesota finishing at 92 and 70 with the Guardians also a wild card team, 12 games above 500. How about this? Seattle wins the West with 94 wins. The Angels and Mike Trout Going back to the playoffs as well, the Houston Astros, 10 games above 500, but they missed the playoffs. And then you do have the Oakland Athletics losing over 100 games with 101 losses. The Atlanta Braves win the East. The Mets are a wildcard team. The Braves finish with 90 wins. The Cincinnati Reds win the NL Central. They will be hosting playoff games there, and they are the only team from the Central to make the playoffs. And then the Dodgers win 100 games. They won 102 with the Padres and Giants both both making the playoffs there. The team that was the worst was the Miami Marlins. They finished 58 and 104. And looking at the overall statistics, I think I'm going to also look at team statistics here. So how about Harold Castro? Ends up leading the league in batting average out of nowhere. Good for him. His career batting average now is almost 300. He played 143 games. He had 169 total hits. Just 2.3 war. And bar- I mean, he barely had an OPS above 100. But you've got to give him credit for at least having a good average. Alec Thomas hitting 321. Nice little outbreak for him. Aaron Judge finishes at 318. League leader in home runs, the home run king in the AL, Aaron Judge with 49 in the NL, Miguel Sano, Muncie with 47, Fernando Tatis with 46, Alex Bregman with 45, and Nick Prato finishing with 45 as well. Jose Ramirez finishes 129 RBIs in front of Aaron Judge, Muncie, George Springer, Sano, and Bregman. Mike Trout leads an on-base percentage. Fernando Tatis Jr. leads in slugging and OPS. Both Tatis and Judge finished with an OPS above 1,000. Carlos Correa and Fernando Tatis tie for the war lead. So you would imagine those are your two MVPs. Carlos Correa comes back to Minnesota and has a great season with 27 home runs, 105 total runs, and a really nice defense there at shortstop with a war almost around 9 Um, And then just looking at more of these, Mike Trout leading in walks, Cedric Mullins leading in stolen bases, OPS plus Tatis, Judge, Trout, Vladdy Jr., Bregman, and Brian Reynolds. So Brian Reynolds must have really struggled there at the end. It was looking like he was going to win it. Look at this, win probability added, Nick Prato, Jose Ramirez, Vlad, Trout, Bregman, and Tatis. And then you do have, what a Joey Gallo. I mean, what do you, this just is unbelievable. Joey Gallo plays 150 games. He hits 138. It's it's sad. It really is sad. But looking at the pitching leaders, the ERA King, unbelievable. Domingo Herman, who was an all-star this year, leads an ERA and he didn't even pitch well with Houston. He got traded and he went 1 and 6 with a 431. What a weird season there. Looking uh, at some other players, Justin Verlander finishing 3rd, Walker Bueller finishing 5th, Brandon Woodruff the win the wins leader with 19, Sonny Gray with 17, Sandy Alcantar finishes the season 32 starts, 5 and 20. With a 538 ERA, Jacob DeGrom, really nice season there. He did have a high ERA, but his his, his fielding independent pitching was good, so he got unlucky. 
finishing 15 and 11. Woodruff leading in innings with DeGrom in second, Giolito in third, DeGrom leading in complete games there. So I would imagine the Cy Youngs are going to be DeGrom and probably in the NL, probably Walker Bueller or maybe Corbin Burns. We'll have to see. Looking at the team statistics, I would like to, is there a way to see, oh, this is how you do it, I guess. Team batting stats, oh, you can't even do that. Well, all right, whatever. Uh, we're just going to go look at the playoff, how do you go to the oh, playoff tree? Here it is. So we have the Blue Jays and the Angels in a three-game series, and then the Guardians and the Twins. The winner of the Blue Jays-Angels takes on the New York Yankees, the winner of the Guardians Twins goes to Seattle. And then in the NL, we've got San Francisco taking on San Diego. Winner gets the Dodgers. And then you have the New York Mets taking on Cincinnati. The winner faces the Atlanta Braves. So we're going to go ahead and simulate through this first round. Now we, All right, now we are on to the divisional series. And how about Mike Trout improving his playoff record to 0-5? They get swept in a best of three. It's going to be New York versus Toronto in the division series. And then you do have the Twins beating the Guardians 2-1. to one. They will be taking on Seattle. In the NL, you had San Diego sweep San Francisco 2 nothing, And how about Cincinnati sweeping the Mets 2 to nothing? We've got some great matchups here for the divisional series. We are on to the League Championship Series. The Yankees beating the Blue Jays in a final game, 3-2. You had Seattle sweep Minnesota, 3-0. It is the New York Yankees versus the Seattle Mariners. Winner goes to the World Series. And how amazing it is for those two teams. The Yankees haven't been to a World Series since, I believe, 2009. And the Mariners, it's been forever. And then you did have San Diego beat the Dodgers again. They were down to nothing. They win three straight games. And Atlanta bludgeoned Cincinnati 3 0. They swept them. So it's Atlanta against San Diego in the NL for a trip to the World Series. I'm going to go ahead and simulate this. Ladies and gentlemen, after two Game 7s, Seattle was up 3-1 on the Yankees. The Yankees win three straight. They are in the World Series, and they're taking on the Atlanta Braves, who just won it a few years ago. It's the Yankees and the Braves in the 2023 World Series, and we're just going to auto-sim this. It's probably going to take a while to... Uh, update, but we've got Atlanta striking first. They're up one games to none. Now they're up two games to none. The Yankees are going to have to show a response. I don't know if there's a way I can see this. Maybe go to the scores. All right, so this is game number three. I don't know why it's in mountain time, but so this is game three. I believe, I mean, you would think you would think they would show who's leading in the series. I think the Braves are leading right now 2 to 1. So the Braves are leading 2 to 1 and they have two home games. So we'll see who wins this. Can I go back and look? And the Braves win 2 to 1. They're up 3 to 1 in the series. What a low scoring game that was. Matt Olson with the home run. Braves trying to close it out at home. And I think they just did. And they win the World Series. Another really low scoring game. So the Atlanta Braves win yet another World Series. They beat the Yankees 4-1 to one in five total games. Aaron Judge and Carlos Rodon had great performances, but they lose. And we are going to go to all of the, you know, manager of the year, all of these different gold glove and stuff like that, all the awards. All right, we've got the AL Gold Glove Award winners, Shohei Otani winning it as a pitcher. You've got Sean Murphy. I, I forgot to trade Sean Murphy to the Braves. Whoops. Wilmer Flores, first base. Nicky Lopez, Matt Chapman, Correa, Benintendi, Christian Pache, and Ramon Laureano. So two athletics. And then for the NL, Max Freed. JT Real Muto, Matt Olson, Nico Horner. You've got Nolan Arenado, Francisco Lindor. What did he fin? Man, oh my goodness. 
Francisco Lindor hit 210 with an on base under 300. Chris Bryant, how did Chris Bryant do? He hit 239 at Coors, Kevin Kiermeyer, and then Okunya Jr. And what do we have? The reliever of the year now. Let's let this go. AL reliever of the year was Rysel Iglesias with the Los Angeles Angels winning, uh, you know, with 23 total first place votes. You can see the list right there. The NL reliever of the year, Randy Rodriguez. Are you kidding? Who even are some? There's Josh Hader, I guess, Will Smith, but a lot of new players, and he was a rookie. Wow. What a, he's a five star? Holy crap. 184 ERA. What a great start. That's a, that's a Hall of Fame level career right there. Hall of Fame trajectory for him. American League Platinum Stick winners. Who is this? Livin Sota with 10 triples. Wow. Sometimes you just find random players on this list. Now, most of these guys are known. There's Kowser. He had a great year. Wow. NL, you can see Contreras, who was still with the Cubs. Casey Schmidt, who suddenly is a superstar that no one knows. CJ Abrams with the Nationals, five star player. How did he do? He had a nice year. Not, I mean, a decent year, I wouldn't say. Kind of average overall. AL best rookie, not surprising there. Colton Kowser, NL's best rookie, Ezekiel Tovar. The course factor helped him out a little bit. Aaron Boone, Aaron Boone wins AL Manager of the Year. Padres, Bob Melvin wins the NL Award. George Kirby ends up winning the Cy Young going 14 and 9 with a 312 ERA. Jacob DeGrom receives seven first place votes. Sonny Gray finishes in second place. Shohei Otani also on the list towards the bottom. And then we do have Walker Bueller winning the NL Cy Young after an injury riddled season last year. Julio Urias, his teammate, finishes in second. Brandon Woodruff did receive two first place votes, but Bueller wins it easily. Aaron Judge goes back to back on MVPs. This was a very split vote. You had Aaron Judge getting 21 total first place votes. Mike Trout got two. Otani got five. Correa, who quite honestly probably was robbed here. I mean, Correa's war was significantly better than Judge's, but that's not the end all be all. And then for the NL, Tatis sweeps it with 30 total first place votes. His season overall was pretty absurd in just 126 games. So guys, that is going to do it for this fun little simulation that uh, you know I did with the Atlanta Braves winning the World Series over the New York Yankees. Just a fun little 2023 MLB sim.